Hey guys, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Wanted to do another Fusion video, and this time I wanted to highlight Fusion's direct modeling capabilities, specifically the ability to de-feature a part. This part that you see on screen is a component that's made by a company called Stace Allen Chucks out of Indiana, and it's a great part for doing cam training. And uh, they were nice enough to give me permission to use this part to kind of show it in a YouTube video. So I wanted to take an opportunity to show some things that could be done in this part. If we look at what this part looks like, what we want to do is we want to first turn the profile of this part in the lathe before moving it over to the mill. And when I get it over to the mill, I don't want to waste a lot of time cutting stock that's uh, not there. I don't want to define the stock as being, uh, you know, a cylinder or a square or whatever, I want to use an actual solid body. So what I want to do is I want to take the solid body that you see on the screen and I want to convert it back into lathe stock by defeaturing it. So a couple things to note, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there's no timeline uh, down here. I'm not capturing any history. The, this was an imported model and that's why the timeline is shut off by default. And at this point, I could turn it on if I want to, but I don't want to. To turn it on, I could right click on locator and tell it to capture design history but I don't want to capture all these different things that I'm going to do right now. I want to leave this off. Um, I'm going to expand up my bodies folder and you'll see that I have something here called body one. I need this part to mill on, but I want to make a, a copy of this so that I can defeature it and make it into lathe stock. So to do that, I'm going to right click on this body one and choose copy. And then I'm going to right click on the bodies folder and say paste. Fusion brings up the move copy dialog box. And I don't want to move anything. I just want to put it exactly right where it's at or right over the top of the original part. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now I have uh, two copies of a part. You see if I shut that off, nothing really looks like it's happening. It's because they're the same part. So let's rename body one to be mill. And let's rename body two to be lathe stock. So later on, I'm going to use this body to go ahead and uh, define that as the stock in our setup. I don't want to make any changes to the mill part, so to make sure that I can't do that, I'm going to just turn the light bulb off so that part is invisible. So now we're just looking at our lathe stock. Uh, if you didn't know, Fusion has really powerful capabilities to uh, delete and heal features on the part. So for instance, if I wanted to go through and look at anything on this part that wasn't a lathe feature, I can just go and start removing those. Uh, I'm going to hold down the control button on PC or command on Windows and start selecting some of these faces. And then I'm just going to click on the delete key on my keyboard and you can see Fusion gets rid of that feature and heals it back up. So we'll go grab that hole, delete to get rid of it, come and grab this hole, hit the delete key. And you can, uh, alternatively, I could click on this, right click and choose delete as well to get rid of it that way. So I could do that from the marking menu. So I'm going to kind of work around there. You can see I got some of the stuff on the top side. There's some holes across the bottom that I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on these holes to get rid of them. And uh, there, we're starting to remove some features. Square back up on the top. Now, if you didn't know it inside of Fusion, there's some other selection filters that you can use. If I go from left to right, let me change this to window selection. If I go from left to right, you'll see I get a rectangle and uh, it's kind of orange with a solid blue line around it. That means in order for something to be selected on the screen, it has to be fully bounded inside of that box. If I go from right to left, you see I get kind of that yellow greenish uh, square now with dotted edges. And that means that anything that this box touches is automatically going to be selected uh, with by Fusion. So let's go through and take a look to see if we can start removing some of these features. Now, I want to start removing these kind of curved faces across here. And what I could do is kind of come and do the same technique where I hold down the control or the shift key and select everything and click on the delete key. But we have a lot of faces and it's going to take some time to go ahead and do that. So I want to check on one selection. Okay, so I got that set up the right way. Um, if I try to go left to right on this and drag a window that gets everything, you can see it's either difficult or somewhat impossible, I guess. Uh, there you can see I did it, I got it pretty good. Uh, but instead, I think using a custom freeform tool would make this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go up to the select menu and choose the freeform selection. And again, I'm gonna go from right, uh, sorry, left to right. I'm gonna drag a box around and I'm just gonna highlight the features that I wanna cover once they're kind of lassoed. 
I'm going to hit the, the delete key and they're going to go, go away. So again, we'll just do the same thing right up here, drag around, hit the delete key. We're starting to remove those features off there. Same thing right here. Drag around that, make sure it's fully bound in the box, click on delete and we get what we want. So we're starting to make some ground and, and uh, getting rid of features we don't want to see. I have these uh, five kind of cutouts that I don't want to deal with with the holes in them. So I can do the same thing, but watch what happens when I do it this time. So I'm going to drag my, my freeform tool around it and I'm going to click on delete. And instead of uh, filling up that void, it removes some of those things. That's because it can't select, it's only selecting what we can see on the screen. So I'm going to undo that. And we're going to look at another selection tool. On the selection filters, I want to choose the select through button. That's going to be able to select through the model. Now if I do that same thing, and drag around this, and click on delete, you see that I get the result that I want. So we'll continue to go around this part and delete that stuff off. So there we go. A couple more to go. So there I wasn't very careful and I missed it. I'll just do it one more time and delete it. Come back around one last one for this type feature, and we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now I guess we have one more to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and ditch that off. So we have some more uh, features to go look. If we look at the bottom, there's nothing that's kind of a whole feature. Uh, so we should be pretty safe to just start dragging windows around the part like this. Covers that, click on delete. And there you can see I still have my chamfer that I'm uh, that I care about, but we're starting to get rid of that wedge shape, turning this back into a holistic part. So I'll go through, drag my window around, delete, and there we go. Do the same thing. I'm just making sure I'm coming through the middle, delete, and then we only have a couple more to go. There, I want to be careful because you see I selected too much. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that one again. I don't want to select the whole chamfer, hit delete, and then we get what we want. And then the, the last one should be pretty easy. Hit the delete key. Now you can see that I've taken the mill model, taken the mill model, and I've turned that back into something that could easily be cut on a, on a lathe. And in fact, this would probably be a better part to cut on the lathe than it would be to do on the mill. So now I've defeatured this enough that I've got some mill and I've got some lathe. So let's turn the lathe off now and turn the mill back on and we'll jump over to the cam environment. I'm going to choose to do my setup. And when I do I, uh, my X, Y, Z is in the wrong orientation. So I want my Z to go up. I'm going to go ahead and click on the base of the Z and choose some face to be perpendicular to. And then I'd like my X to be, you know, to go the opposite way. So I can either click on the arrow or I could align it with that axis right there. I think th that'll work just fine for me. If I click on the dot, you can see I can jump around and choose any part. I do want to put this in the center. But when we look, the stock is currently a square and we just put all that work into making the stocks uh, a round part um, that was looks like the lathe. So what I want to do is go to my mode and I'm going to choose instead of a relative size box, I want to choose from a solid. And now what I have to do is expand out my cam component, my part and my bodies. And even though that lathe part is turned off, I can still click on it. And you can see when I do fusion uh, figures out what that body looks like. And I can go ahead and click OK. And now you can see that uh, the stock is the exact same uh, thing that what would come off of the lathe. So if we go grab a quick tool path and put on that, let's choose to do a 3D adaptive clearing. I'm gonna go grab one of the sample tools that you can find in the tutorial inch folder. And I'm going to choose to use a half inch tool with a 16th of an inch bull nose on it. And we'll go ahead and click okay. For the geometry, I'm not going to select anything. I'm gonna let Fusion figure out where the stock is. So we'll just keep on moving past that. Let's go to the heights. It's going to go from the stock top to the model bottom. I could even go past the bottom a little bit if I want to. That'll work out fine. On the passes tab, I've got my optimal load. If I right click and edit the expression, I've got my optimal load set up to take 20% of the tool diameter. Uh, so 20% of 0.5, which is what I want in this case. We'll go ahead and click OK or 0.1 inches. 
we can go through and look at a few more things. Now, the maximum roughing step down, Adaptive Clearing wants to try to go as deep as it can with the tool and then walk back up the walls that it can. So I could type in a much greater value. For instance, I could type in seven here. We don't have seven inches of flute length, so if I hover over that dialog box, Fusion's gonna tell me that this tool only has a flute length of three quarters. So I don't really wanna go any deeper than three quarter. However, so I could type in 0.75. Um, I'm all about trying to make my job easier and more efficient. So instead of typing in a value at all, I'm gonna use an expression. And the expression I'm gonna use in here is going to be uh, tool underscore flute length. When we define the tool, that's a parameter that we set up when we in the tool library. So now Fusion goes, oh, you wanna go the length of the flute length. And maybe we wanna back off just a little bit so we're not cutting all the way up to the uh, to where that flute is supposed to end. So I'll say times 0.9. So we're gonna take 90% of the flute length. Let's add a fine step down of 0 0.05. This is how Fusion is gonna walk back up the wall and kind of leave a terraced effect on the part. For the radial and axial, I'm gonna leave 10 thousandths radial and axially. And a couple other things I wanna turn on. I wanna make sure that I have flat area detection checked. And I'm also gonna order by area. And I think I have enough uh, information to go ahead and click OK and see what I get for a toolpath. So I'm going to take click OK. It's going to take 35, 45, 50 seconds. I'll come back and uh, we'll look at the simulation and see what we end up with. OK, we're back. So if we take a look at the toolpath that Fusion generated, uh, I think it's fairly impressive. It did all that on its own. I just had to define uh, the, the parameters for the step downs and things like that that I wanted the toolpath and Fusion went and automatically found all the geometry. A couple things to note, uh, Fusion recognizes that there's a big hole in the center of this so it can plunge straight down in there and it doesn't need to worry about helixing in through the material. And it also noticed that it didn't do anything on the outside of the part because it knows that the model body and the, part of the stock body are the exact same surface, so it didn't waste any time going down there. Um, one more thing that we can take a look at, and we can tie this into a previous video. I'll put a card to that, uh, pop it up here so you can go take a look. Fusion's kind of going into these areas, and it can't fully fit in there, and I kind of wish that I wouldn't. Maybe I want to come back in with a smaller tool and take care of that. So let's switch over to the patch environment and see how we can kind of patch this up and then use that patch to avoid the tool going in there. We'll only do this for one of the areas. So I'm gonna switch from cam back into the patch workspace. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose the loft command for this. And I wanna make sure that I'm not selecting multiple chains. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna start clicking on edges that I wanna to loft together. So I'll just work up this side. I can't select this last arc right there, but we'll come back and take a look at an easy way to uh, take care of that in a minute. Now, as I start selecting edges on the other side, you can see how Fusion is trying to figure out how to patch that back up. And when I select the last one, it does a pretty good job, except for that patch goes straight across instead of following the curvature. So let's add a guide rail for it to follow. I'm gonna click on the rails button and select that edge. And now you can see that this patch is now being guided by that curve uh, to add a boundary patch across that area right there. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And what I wanna do is add one more patch up here. Now that I have this patch, I have a confined region that I can go ahead and patch up again. So I'm gonna to choose to do another patch. I'm gonna select this edge and this edge. We'll go ahead and click OK. And there you can see that we have that whole area patched but we still have a couple of services there. So let's stitch those together by going to the Modify menu and choosing Stitch. I'm gonna click on this surface and this surface. Fusion's showing me the green line where it's gonna stitch those two things together. Click OK. We're down to one uh, body right there. So now I could go back in to Cam. Remember, we would complete each of the rest of these uh, little areas if we didn't want the tool to go in there. Uh, I think you guys will get the idea what's gonna happen. Uh, so I'm going to edit this, and what I have to do is go to the Geometry tab, and on the Geometry tab, you'll see that there's a model checkbox. I have to tell Fusion, in addition to the main model that we're machining, I'm also going to specify some surfaces that I also want it to honor as being model surfaces. So I'll just come over and uh, I'm just going to grab that surface right there. You see it's all highlighted, and it says that it selected one body. 
I'm gonna click OK, and when I do, it's gonna take Fusion a minute to, again, generate this toolpath, so I'll be back with you when the toolpath is done calculating. So let's take a look at the toolpath that we have. Notice how that toolpath is still diving in these areas that we didn't patch, but where the patch is, it's not going in there. And uh, if I'm done now, I can go ahead and just turn the visibility of that patch off. And future operations, if I want to come back in there with a different operation, I can go ahead and do that. And no longer is that patch going to be honored uh, unless I specify it in the model tab again to be selected. So I'll click on that adaptive and you can see the finished tool path. If we simulate what this looks like for one last step, let's go ahead and turn the stock on. Hit play. I've got the stock transparent. I'm going to let it go really fast. Actually, let's turn the stock off, the transparency. And there's the finished product that you see. Uh, so we roughed out the majority of what's going on in here. Now we can come back with some uh, other servicing tool paths or whatever it might be to finish machining this part. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, Fusion has really great integrated CAD and CAM and use all these tools to your advantage. You can see how we can uh, use the model workspace, the patch workspace, and the CAM workspace in unison to help our task of getting this part machined as efficiently as possible. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a like. And if you found this helpful and think that uh, you'd like to see more content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.